The beginning of the story of the people of God goes back to another episode now expressed as a Yahweh story. The progenitors of the Hebrew tradition are named as Abraham and Sarah. Their role as the patriarch and matriarch of many nations begins with an anomalous close encounter. Yahweh appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing by. When he saw them, he hurried to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, If I have found favor in your eyes, my lord, do not pass your servant by. Let water be brought for you to wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed before you go on your way. Then one of them said, I will surely return in about a year, by which time your wife will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance of the tent. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, Worn out as I am, and old as my master is, will I now have this pleasure? The stranger's words prove true. The elderly couple give birth to Isaac, and Isaac produces two sons, Jacob and Esau. But how ancient is this story? Does it come from far further back in the lineage of Homo sapiens? The story of Jacob and Esau would appear to describe two different kinds of human being. One is smooth-skinned and highly intelligent, Jacob. The other, Esau, is considerably less intelligent. He is as strong as an ox, and his body is covered in thick red hair. In fact, his body hair is so thick that his blind father is unable to tell the difference between the skin of Esau and the height of a goat. The smooth-skinned human learns to manipulate and control the hairy one with offerings of food, and despite being the younger, manages to gain the upper hand and take control of their environment. Now that clues me that we might be looking at a far more ancient story than we think we are. And indeed, if Abraham and Sarah of the Hebrew tradition are in fact the same as Brahma and Saraswati of the Vedic tradition, then we really are looking at a more ancient story because Brahma and Saraswati are the progenitors of humanity in the Vedic tradition. Now that's a nice story in which we have a benevolent encounter with sky people who are very attractive and look human. In that encounter, Abraham and Sarah just think that they're three guys at the beginning of the encounter. Now when those entities then go and visit Sodom in the very next chapter, we're told something else about them, and that is that they're drop-dead gorgeous. In fact, they're so attractive that the locals are driven wild with passion for them. And so that's a clue that those sky people, those powerful ones, looked human and were very attractive. But we have other passages, other ancient stories that seem to depict human colonies being governed over by entities that look and sound more like dragons. And so when you get to the transition king, the first human king over the people of God, You've got a story of the human beings saying to Yahweh, we don't want you governing anymore, we want a human king. If Yahweh is the name for Almighty God, that story doesn't make any sense at all. But when you realize the name has actually been pasted over some of these other more traumatic memories, the picture begins to resolve and you understand what you're looking at.